Welcome back to True Crime Lounge Podcast here on Spotify and YouTube. I do have a Patreon that you can join by for early access to the episode scheduled to come out. I also have a merch shop that for your true crime gear. For any updates, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, now, with that being said, let's dive into today's short episode. Um, so... Today we're going to be talking about the unsolved disappearance of Carla Goose. Um, I am trying to broaden some of the cases because this season on season four, um, I really talk a lot about Alabama murders, so but I really want to expand beyond that. Um, try I've been trying to expand beyond that. But also, if there is anything you know that could ple- help, please call the authorities because any details is important right now. But the night before Carly disappeared, she was last. She was seen at a party with her friends in her neighborhood, not far from her Chalfan Cal- Valley, California home. And she called her stepmother in a panic, saying that she needed to be picked up from a party. Melissa Goose would pick up Carly, and she later said that she seemed disoriented and exhibited paranoid behavior. Once home. It took hours to get Carly calmed down from her sleep. And when well, when Melissa awoke the next morning on October 13, 2018, Carly was asleep in her bed. But when she checked out on the sec- checked on her sec time around at around 7 a.m., she was nowhere to be found. And law enforcement canvassed the neighborhood and turned up two witnesses, and they say they saw Carly walking toward Highway 6 with a piece of paper in her hand and all of Carly's belongings, including her cell phone, and were, home, were found at her home. Carly had been experiencing problems prior to disappearing. Her father and stepmother acknowledged Carly's history of experimenting with drugs and attending parties, alternative education, in order to improve her grades. Despite all of these factors, however, there appeared to be nothing Thing that would have prompted her to leave the house in that morning. Investigators, both both in law enforcement and independent firms, continued to search for Carly while her mother, her stepfather, her stepmother, and her biological mother, father, and her father, and the rest of her family would wait anxiously for her to come home. At 16 years old, she's she's just a typical teenager. She likes to dance, hang out with her boyfriend, and make money at her at the school job. So, according to um, according to her mom, Lindsay Fairley, she was like, everyone knows Carly. They love her. And see, so and Lindsay and Carly's father, Zachary Goose, divorced when she was only two, and Carly lived with her mother at first, but went went up to Bishop, California, to with her father, Zachary, when he and Melissa, with his wife, Melissa, eight to ten years, eight to ten years ago. We were really, really open, and we were literally best friends. She could talk to me about anything, her mom would tell Dateline. And she would also say that she is absolutely lovely by everybody that knows her, and that she was such a sweet girl, and she's funny. Carly's stepmother, Melissa, told Dateline that in the beginning of October, Carly was a happy kid, and her positive attitude was no different than usual. Her family had moved just moved from just north of Bishop to a town called Chalfont, but Carly wasn't faced by the move, and she was able to stay in the same school district. And on Friday, October 12th, Carly left home to hang out with her friends, as her stepmother says, which was typical for her. And according to her mother, Lindsay, Carly's boyfriend, Donald Arnold III, that's a name to have, and especially his generation, would later say after hanging out with her friends for a while, Carly started to feel, not feel well, and she wanted to leave the party. Carly's stepmother, Melissa, said that she called me to pick her up, and I picked her up from the town, from town, and just brought her home. She, <clears throat> and they would, and Carly, she also said that she and Carly got home around 9 o'clock p.m., and according to Melissa, they ate dinner before Carly went to bed. 
Now Carly's dad, Zachary, seemed disoriented because before he she went to bed. Said Carly seemed disoriented before she went to bed. The case of the case around five forty five, Melissa said that she went through and she went through her usual routine of opening the doors and saying good morning to everyone. She told Dateline she saw Carly in the bed at that time. Melissa said she then went down back to, back to her room for to sleep for a little bit. But when she woke up again a little bit later and opened Carly's door again, she was nowhere to be found. She said, she said I, w I went back to her bedroom and I said, honey, she's not there. And he said, what do you mean she's not here? And I said, she's gone. She's not in her room. She's not outside. And she's not in the backyard. She's not anywhere. Melissa and Zachary would tell Dateline that they first thought she might have gone for a walk. Morning walks, okay. They decided that to get in each other's car and drive around town to see if they could find her. Her dad was, wasn't was nervous at first because he thought they'd find her walking down the road. But after two hours to in the five minutes searching of with no signs of Carly, he, he, her dad quickly grew concerned. Melissa said it was about 9.30 a.m. when they arrived home from their search. Zachary did call Carly's mom, Lindsay, who lived in, Neva who lived in Nevada, to let her know Katie was miss Carly was missing. And he would call Mono County Sheriff's Office and file a missing persons report. Melissa and Zachary said deputies came to the house a few hours later and began asking neighbors if they had seen anything unusual. Meanwhile, Lindsay drove to from in from drove in from her home in Nevada and said I arrived nine out nine hours after finding out she was missing. Carly's mom Lindsay said, Of course I was in shambles. I couldn't stop shaking. Literally my body was paralyzed. A search of the home so the home A search of the home would lead to the discovery of Carly's belongings, so authorities had no way of tracking her. According to Melissa, three witnesses told authorities that they saw her stepdaughter walking toward Highway 6, which is near the Goose's home. And this is the only lead authorities have yet to find. Other than confirming a, site, a sighting in the area of Highway 6 in White Mountain States in the morning of her disappearance with no new information to report, the Mono County Sheriff's Department said in the Facebook post on October 15th, we have deployed all multiple resources, including helicopters, sent dogs, sent dogs, sent search and rescue team, and off-road vehicles to thoroughly search the surrounding neighborhood and high desert terrain. Interviews of the family and friends have been conducted, as well as a forensic investigation into her social media and electronic devices. The Mono County Sheriff's Department did not respond to Dateline's request for a comment. In a Facebook post, at the one week Carly disappeared, authorities would say that she does not meet the criteria for an Amber Alert, as no evidence has been indication of an adoption. She's a teenager. You issue an Amber Alert. Now. Okay. First of all, she's a teenager. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I thought Amber Alerts were for children under 18, but my bad. Um. Anyway. <laughs> They are following all, we are following all leads and tips considering the possibilities. And we have enlisted the assistance of many resources in our search for Carly. We've interviewed the family and friends for several days. And we have conducted a search surrounding the high desert, utilizing helicopters, sent dogs, off-road vehicles, um, foot patrol, and scouring social media for electronic devices. Her family is fully cooperative, and we are in regular contact with them. Her mom has been sick to her stomach from the pain of her daughter's disappearance. She would also go and say, there's times when I have no energy to cry. Nighttime is just too hard for me because 
I pray that she is warm and she is safe and she is nourished. And I pray nobody hurt her. I never thought I'd be dealing with this. It was always my worst nightmare. Who is it to have a child go missing? Her boyfriend Donald posted on Facebook saying that he misses her and how much he does. Um, and say he would also go on to say, "Words cannot explain how much I miss you. I will. I want you to know you're okay. I want. You, I want to know you're okay. I want to hold your arms. I want to lay your head on my chest, and I want to and be in your presence because only things can." ever make me happy it's you you give me a purpose to this life come on so i can take those beautiful gorgeous big blue eyes and see a smile in your arms her dad would also would say that his only goal is to bring his daughter home home and safe and he would say, also say that it's miserable killing our family it's not good he said, I don't understand any of this. I don't understand how she would run away. Um, I don't believe she would. But you can't rule anything out. And, it's, and I think it's possible that someone took her. I think it's possible she ran away. I don't, she ran away. I don't know what happened. I don't honest, I honestly don't know. Carly's stepmom, Melissa, would, tell, would say, echoing her husband. In March 2019, they would do an interview with Dr. Phil, and Melissa, w Dr. Phil said that she had lied at NBC in October when she spoke on Dateline, and she would basically say that next morning at 5.45, you did your usual morning routine, and the kids were up saying, good morning, getting ready for school, and did she, did you, she was still in the bed, and she was like, no, that, the Dateline, NBC. And yeah, that was a false story because I wasn't. It was a lie about taking Carly because it was in the beginning that I had that I, and I didn't know what to say. I shouldn't have done the interview even done the interview. Her dad was also in on with the Dr. Phil interview. And he would all go and say it was too early. You don't know what to do. There's no handbook for this. It is now unclear where Carly was last seen. In October 2018, Carly said that despite the lack of leaves, she was optimistic Carly will be found home safe. I feel like she's okay. I feel she has somewhere, and I hope, have a lot of hope, Melissa told Dateline. She also said to ask if anyone's seen Carly, take a picture, and if you see her, just call her. Don't be afraid. Carly is described as being 5'7 and weighing 110 pounds, with dark blonde hair and blue eyes. Authorities say she was wearing a white t-shirt and gray, gray sweatpants at the time she went missing. If you have any interest information surrounding Carly's disappearance, please call the Monroe County Sheriff's Department and select option 7. Um, I will post a number in there, link. I will post a number here as well, so you can call um, as well, but... Any information can help find her and bring her home. Carly, if you're okay, just, I pray you're okay. I really do.